Hello, it's me, <clears throat> Mr. White Privilege, yet again. I was doing a little bit of thinking and I've thrown a lot of information your way. And um, I thought it would be helpful if maybe we went back to the, the, uh, the beginning of sorts. How did this comprehensive equity plan even begin? Where did it start from? How was it brought to light? But before I do that, I just wanted to make one quick comment. Um, in different videos, you people have probably heard me reference the NAACP in the same sentences as uh, Black Lives Matter. Um, this is from the NAACP Loudon Branches website, and <clears throat> it's about, I don't know, education is what it's about. But look at the bottom here in the, in the red box. The LCP, excuse me, the NAACP is demanding all school board members receive immediate professional development to disrupt white supremacy ideo ideology as stated in the superintendent equity statement. They're not asking, they're not requesting, they're demanding. So just wanted to shed a little light on that, a little clarity that uh, they're, they're not a, a, I don't know if anybody thought they were a passive group, but they certainly have a stake in this. Anyways, from here, the LCPS equity overview. Here's all the different options you can expand on, right? The core beliefs and the superintendents, you know, what's up Doc Williams message, equity assessments, assessments, so on and so forth. But what we're gonna look at now is the equity assessment, okay, which is this. And we pull it up. Nope, that's not it. This is it. So this was an initiative that was done last year um, there was some collaboration with the NAACP. I don't know if the NAACP m made a recommendation for this group or what the what the deal was. But in any case, the equitive the excuse me the equity collaborative. So they conducted a, a test or excuse me a, an assessment and provided it to the LCPS board and what's up Doc Williams on June 9th, uh, June 2019, and then a final version I think was released to all the parents in August or September of last year. Um, in here it's it's about 20 I think it's 28 pages long and this is where it all starts okay the county had this group come in and do a systemic equity assessment a picture of racial equity challenges and opportunities in Loudoun County Public School District. This is where it all began. In here, you'll find that there is, uh, like I said, about 28 pages of information. I'm not going to go through everything for you, um, but I'll put a link in, in the uh, in the comment section if you want to check it out yourself. Um, but there's a couple things that I found interesting. Uh, the five emergent themes, despite efforts from the number one, despite efforts from the division, school site staff. Specifically, principals and teachers indicate a low level of racial consciousness. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Racial consciousness and racial literacy. Basically saying you got a bunch of stupid people in your school systems that don't know anything about racial equity. Um, number two, educator focus groups indicated a desire to recruit and hire diverse school staff that reflect the student racial and language backgrounds. This one's interesting for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, this has been an effort or a goal, if you will, for Loudoun County Public Schools for at least 12 years. I can go back to 2008 where it was documented by the Virginia State Department of Education where they indicated they needed to rec recruit more minor minority staff, okay? And here we are in 2020 and it's still a goal. Now, the other thing about this is you will, I can't find anywhere that they want to a desire to recruit and hire diverse staff that reflects student racial and language backgrounds okay so w what is that number is this is this a number we're just chasing in the dark you've got a uh, population of student population of uh, a black population of seven percent so how many teachers or staff does seven percent of the student population equate to no idea and you can apply the same equation towards hispanic and asian and whites I um, have no idea what these numbers are supposed to be. I don't. I can't find them anywhere. So that's just something else to scratch your head on. 
uh, economic diversity across the county division complicates the discussions about race, leading many people to steer the conversation away from race to focus on poverty. I don't know if these people have ever been in Loudoun County, but it's the, the, the wealthiest county in the country. It is not to suggest that there aren't people that are less fortunate. Um, but just because they're less fortunate doesn't mean that the conversation of race has to go away. And I really don't understand what they're really driving at here because it's it really, it, to me, it sounds stupid. Uh, number four, discipline policies and practices disproportionately, disproportionately negatively impact students of color, particularly black students. Now, again, I said this in a previous video, they have all kinds of metrics and numbers and algorithms and all kinds of garbage to spit out whatever answer it is they desire to have. The question I have is, are we approaching this the right way? What is the crime? Or what is the, the uh, uh, disruption the student was involved in that led to the punishment? I don't care if they're black. I don't care if they're white. I don't care what they are. If the punishment fits the crime, then so be it. And if you have more blacks committing the, you know, these, these activities in school or misbehaving, and there's a justifiable punishment associated with what it is they were doing, then so be it. That's just the way it is. Same with white kids. If they, if they do the same thing as a black kid or a Hispanic kid, they should all be treated the same. The fact that we're even having a conversation around negatively uh, or disproportionately negative impact of students of color is ridiculous. Are they doing something they shouldn't be doing? If the answer is yes, what is it? And then once you define what it is, what is the punishment? Now it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a case by case basis. Okay. Cause you got, I don't know how many different schools around here, a bunch. Number five, many English learners, black, African, Latino, Muslim students have experienced a sting of racial insults, slurs, or racial, racially motivated violent actions. Okay. Okay. Uh, four primary recommendations is what this, uh, this genius um, consulting firm that the county hired came up with. Produce and publish on the superintendent's message page a new division authored statement defining and condemning white supremacy, hate speech, hate crimes, and other racially motivated, motivated acts of violence. Require individual school sites include this message on their webpage and in communications to parents twice a year. So this part probably already sounds familiar because I think many kids have already had this uh, read to them. And in What's Up Doc Williams has it in his racial equity super duper message that he sent out. Okay. Review number two, review the current and establish a clear policy with built-in accountability for addressing racially motivated acts and create positive, or excuse me, proactive leadership measures to address the student's use of racial insults. Name that the N-word is not tolerated by anyone in LCPS. The problem with this is, this is geared towards and focused entirely on white students, okay? The problem I have with it is, is that my son had been the uh, uh, target of racial uh, discrimination and racial bias and ra uh, and racism uh, ever since sixth grade. He's a senior now, but ever since sixth grade. Why? Because he's white, he's got blonde hair, he's got blue eyes, and because of his political um, beliefs. We had conversations with the, uh, the principal of the middle school that did absolutely zero good. Restorative circle did zero good because the other parents did not want to quote unquote participate. So whatever. Um, but if my son had screamed the N word in the hallway, you can, you can bet your bottom dollar. He would have been in trouble at home, but he also would have been suspended from school. But the same standards do not apply when the roles are switched. Number three, Design additional opportunities for LCPS educators to engage in professional learning about color consciousness as an implicit bias. This is garbage. This is simply saying, you're racist, you don't know it, and we're gonna help you uh, uncover that. We're even gonna suggest that you, you were born with it. This is, is, is ridiculous. 
And number four, revise the current, establish a short and long range action plan to address challenges related to hiring for diversity, equity, inclusion. We already talked about this. This has been an initiative for 12 years, six of which What's Up Doc Williams has been in charge and he has not moved the, e uh, the, the needle a bit. If Personally, if I were the NAACP, I'd be on this like stink on a monkey. Why hasn't the needle moved in six years under, the, under What's Up Doc's leadership? Hasn't, hasn't done anything. Why is it still? When you accomplish a goal, you take it off your list and you put a new one on. But this thing just keeps repeating itself year after year after year after year. Um, the other thing that I noticed is when you look at the, um, what's the section? Interview and focus group structures. When you look at the, uh, below is a list of roles and groups that participated in interviews or focus sessions. Okay. The Minority Student Achievement Advisory Committee, Principal and Assistant Principals, Administrative Team Interviews, Teacher and Staff, African Americans and Latino Parent Focus, uh, Black and Latino Staff Focus, and Student Focus. Now, the focus was around, the, they did this with 24 different schools. The, the larger percentage of the schools were actually elementary, and any interviews that were conducted of students were fifth grades. In middle school, the students were eighth grade, and in high school, it was a range of uh, grades nine through 12. But it wasn't really a large sample set. And I don't see any, any groups here that would represent white people. I don't think there are any because I think it's just racist to have them. My point is, there's, all, there's, there's clergy in the community, there's, there's religious leaders in the community that could participate in this, but it's all one-sided, which, which really begs the question, what, re what relevance does this assessment really have? It's one-sided. Um, and you can go through here and they have some, some quotes from some students and such, uh, uh, you know, a group of white kids in my school used the N-word and then denied it, okay. So th this, it, I guarantee you it happened. Uh, I guarantee you it happens at every school. And I guarantee you it's just not, it's, it's not the white kids that are leading the charge in this, but I'm, I'm sure they've said it as well. What this school really needs to do is interview all the students because all the kids that I talk to that are in high school truly believe that it, it is the county and these quote unquote adult equity leaders that are creating these problems, not the students. They have, they, they, the students say things that would make your, your, your toes cringe, right? And it's been that way since the dawn of time. Is there a lot of is the Klan walking around the school? No. Is Black, uh, Black Panthers walking around? No. Are, are the Latin Kings walking around? No. Right? But there's a lot of insinuation that there's, there's every white student's walking around with some sort of flag or identity that says, I, I belong to white supremacy, and it's not true. And to, to create the narrative that that's true is, is uh, educational malpractice. It's just wrong. Um, so in any case... This was just a, uh, I just wanted to let everybody know that this is where all this started from, with this assessment. And you can go through it. You know, there's, there's some information here. There's some questionnaires in the back. Um, but if you're really interested in this topic, it helps to understand where it started from. This is Mr. White Privilege, and I'm out.